UIM F1H2O World Championship returned to Portugal for the 14th time as round three was raced in the beautiful city of Porto. One of the oldest urban centers in Europe, Porto is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Featuring such gems as the City Hall Clock Tower, Porto Cathedral, and the iconic Dom Luis Steel Arch Bridge. This is a city with character, reflected in the tightly packed and exquisitely roofed houses rising up over steep hills in the city of over one and a half million inhabitants. Running through the center of Porto is the majestic Douro River. The fort-studded Douro has had a critical place in the country's history, winding its way through Porto on its way to the Atlantic, from where the great Portuguese explorers and fleets conquered the world in the 15th century. Today, the Douro is lined with cafes, bars, and restaurants, serving some of the most exquisite samples of Portuguese cuisine. No trip to Porto is complete without sampling one of Portugal's most famous exports, port wine, which is named after Porto, where it was produced and exported for centuries from the caves of the Vila Nova de Gaia. And at night, Portugal's second biggest city comes alive with color and lights. Back in Portugal for the first time since 2011, the UIM F1H20 Grand Prix will be raced in the most scenic and bustling part of town, where fans showed up in their thousands to see their F1H20 hero, Duarte Benevente of the Portuguese F1GC Atlantic team. The mayor of Porto also got a taste of the thrill of being in an F1 machine as he took a spin on a two-seater. The crowds had gathered the anticipation was palpable as Porto prepared for the fastest race on water. First, let's take a look back at what happened in the previous round. In round two in Evian, France, defending world champion Philippe Schiap had pole position and led the race right from the start, chased by Alex Carella in second position. Schiap seemed headed for a memorable victory in home waters, but in lap 16, disaster struck as the CTIC China team driver was out with a busted flywheel, handing the lead to Alex Carella, who never looked back. Behind Carella, Sami Celio finished runner-up, fighting his way up from fifth at the start, with Yusuf Al Rubayan of F1 GC Atlantic team coming in third. But Carella was disqualified after a post-race inspection, and Celio was penalized for taking out a boy, which gave Al Rubayan his first ever Grand Prix win. Runner-up was Jonas Anderson of Sweden, with Celio's Mad Croc Baba racing teammate, Philip Roms getting his first ever podium in third. A fifth place for Torrente meant the Americans still led the world standings at the end of round two, with Schiap just a point behind him in second, and Al Rubayan tied with Eric Stark for third. There are 20 drivers from 10 teams competing at the Grand Prix of Portugal, round three of the 2015 season. All eyes are on local heroes, F1 GC Atlantic team, who represent Portugal with Al Rubayan, fresh off his win in Evian, and veteran Portuguese driver Duarte Benevente, who'll be driving a brand new, more built boat. We, ha we repair ourselves for the circuit. Uh, I think uh, we have a lot. We will push over the limit. But the man to beat is still Sean Torrente, who continues to lead the world standings despite changing teams and struggling to bring the new boat up to spec. We come from a team and, and a... <laughs> Oh! 
situation where we have brand new everything and the best of everything. And, and now we're on a team where we're kind of scrambling a little bit, but they have you know great resources and we're just trying to get everything put back together and the way it should be. And the guys have done a really good job to do that. And, He's joined in victory team by one of the most successful throttle men in Class 1 history, Nadir Bin Hendi. He's used to sharing racing duties with a co-pilot, and this will be his first time in a single-seat F1H2O boat. I love it. It's beautiful. It's uh, something out of, the, out of the mind. It's a uh, very nice feeling. Defending world champion Philip Schiap and his CTIC China team are looking to get back to their winning ways after that disappointing exit in Evian. They'll all have their work cut out for them with the likes of the formidable Team Abu Dhabi, featuring Alex Carella, the three-time world champion, and the return of a former Grand Prix winner in Portugal, veteran Tani Alcamzi. The young Eric Stark of Emirates team has been turning heads with podium results since entering the competition just a couple of years ago. And then, of course, there's the dark horse from Finland, the two-time world champion, Sammy Celio. He's failed to win in Portugal in 13 attempts, and he wants this one bad as he seeks to reverse a problem-plagued season so far in his quest for a third world title. The circuit on the Douro River has seven pins, with one right-hander and two very short, very tight turns, a total length of 2,158 meters. Well, the course will be interesting. The water is floating quite quickly, so the boat is moving quite a lot on the straight, so we'll see what happens. Passing will be also difficult because there is not so much turn, so you must almost pass on the straight. It's a nasty course. It seems to be flat, but it's not flat and it's really windy, and uh, there is a lot of uh, river flow. It does not help. You have to figure out a good uh, lap to, to be able to set a time, so it's not easy. Qualifying to determine the starting grid is comprised of three stages, with eight boats eliminated in Q1, then another six boats eliminated in Q2, with the remaining six boats having the course themselves to set their fastest lap times in the fight for pole position in Q3. In Q1, it was disappointment for Moritz Stromoy, who won pole position at the last Grand Prix of Portugal. She only managed four laps before she was out with fuel tank problems. Also out in Q1 were Jesper Fors and Bartek Marsalek. On his first official outing, Nadir Bin Hendi found the going tough, ending his qualifying hopes with a huge crash. Unfortunately, nothing's working in the boat. There's no light, there's nothing, no radio. So I was just concentrating. And then uh, I, I just saw a blink of a light coming on and off, the yellow one. And then I was shouting on the radio as I looked on the pontoon and then I, I just took off. In Q2, all eyes were on F1 GC Atlantic team drivers, Yusuf al Rabayan and Duarte Benevente. While Benevente was unable to secure a Q3 ticket, he did manage a top 10 spot. al Rabayan put in a brave battle for the top six, going faster than Ahmed al Hamali of Emirates team, but was bumped out of Q3 by al Hamali's former teammate, Dani al Kamzi. Jonas Anderson of Team Sweden, veteran champ Francesco Cantando, and Zhang Ziwei of CTIC China team were also unable to make the cut for Q3. Q3, just six men left. They get two laps each to set their fastest time. First out was Al Kamzi giving it his all in his debut race of 2015, but he was unable to break the 50-second barrier. Next out, Sean Torrente, the world standings leader. He went more than a second faster than Al Kemzi, but would it be enough considering the caliber of drivers to come? Young Eric Stark of Emirates team. <laughs> Oh. 
team set two excellent laps to go just eight tenths of a second faster than Torrente, nabbing provisional pole with a time of 48.32. Alex Carella was next, and the Italian drove like a man possessed, looking to add another pole to his impressive tally. He broke the 48 second barrier to set a blistering lap time of 47.92, snatching the lead from Stark. Defending world champion Philip Schiap has proven the fastest of the lot out there over the past year, and he did not disappoint as he posted a lap time of 47.75, beating Corella. Last man out, the fastest of Q2, Sammy Celio. The Finnish driver, with 22 poles to his name, hasn't won a pole since 2013. The Finnish ace blasted through the course, finding the speed he needed to challenge Schiap. He did it! Schiap is heartbroken as Celio takes pole position of the Grand Prix of Portugal with a time of 47.59. Pole position, what I can say, it was amazing. Uh, I missed uh, free practice basically completely because we had the technical issue and quite blind for the time trials. I was asking for the other drivers what kind of the setup I need. Can they help for the setup? Of course, they give some hint what size of the prop they are using and that helped me to choose the right one today and what was amazing. Sammy Celio is in prime spot to win his first ever Portuguese title. Great result for Stark in fourth and Torrente will have his work cut out for him in fifth. In the historic Palacio da Bolsa, Porto welcomed the UIM F1H2O family with a wonderful gala dinner and party, celebrating the sport's return to Portugal. The F1H2O family paid their respects and said farewell to one of their own, Siegfried Ziggy Bertel, who passed away earlier this year. Bertel was a former UIM technical commissioner and chairman of both the UIM F1H2O and the safety cockpit committee. At an official ceremony, teams and drivers, friends and family laid wreaths in his honor and his wife, Jan, scattered his ashes over the waters of the Douro River in loving memory of his commitment and contributions to the sport of F1H2O. More than 100,000 spectators turned out for the Grand Prix of Portugal with the biggest field of drivers in years and their spirits were high with a breathtaking air show. Get a podium out of this somehow and hopefully a win. Um, we've got a good setup for the race, it handles well, so hopefully we can get down there on a good start and then work up from there, you know what I mean? If we can come out of the first corner, third or fourth, we're pretty good shape. Yeah, in front of my home, unbelievable, unbelievable weekend so far. Okay. I'm very happy with me, I'm back, Formula One. And I have good boats, we'll be driving very strong, we get the podium. Celio has pole with two other former world champs in second and third behind him. Torrente in fifth, Al Rubayan back in seventh, just ahead of Al Hamali. Stromoy starting back in 17th, with Bin Hendy bringing up the rear. few seconds, drivers and teams wait for the countdown. And there they go, the Grand Prix of Portugal is on. Torrente falls back at the start, Celio leads the field to the commitment boy with Schiap and Corella right up there with him. Cantando moves up among the top boats going neck and neck. Oh. 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 
back with Jonas Anderson. Celio keeps the lead. Great start for Yusuf Al Rubayan, who passes Torrente and Anderson, and then chases Eric Stark. In a battle for second position, Alex Carella moves up on Shiap from the outside, but Shiap fends off the three-time world champion as they come around the turn. Celio, meanwhile, keeps the door shut on Shiap, maintaining that exceptional speed that earned him the pole position. But Shiap has had the fastest boat on the tour for more than a year now as he pushes on Celio. Behind the front runners, Al Rubayan of F1 GC Atlantic team tries to gain on Eric Stark in a bid for fourth, much to the delight of the crowds. Celio's boat is fast, but he's been plagued by fuel tank problems. Hopefully he can avoid any mishaps this time. Further back, Francesco Cantando in his 152nd race pushes on Jonas Anderson, finding the speed he needs on the clear waters on the outside. The big performance so far is from the winner of round two in Evian, Yusuf Al Rubayan, who's still trying to nab fourth spot in a bid to make it two wins in a row for the Kuwaiti. But he has to watch out for Torrente's blue victory boat on his tail. Behind him is Cantando, who has six podiums and seven top five finishes in Portugal over 18 years of racing. And he's attacking Sean Torrente, continuing his tactic of racing on the outside where there's more pace to be found. On board with Sean Torrente, he keeps up his pursuit of Yusuf Al Rubayan, his skill and experience making up for his boat's lack of power. But Cantando is catching up with the American. Torrente hooks it too far right on the yellow boy, and that's all Cantando needs to pass him. Torrente bumped down a spot to 10th position. No changes in the top three. It's still Celio, Shiap, and Corella. Celio and Shiap may drive different boats. Celio in Ababa and Shiap in Amor, but they share the same engine guru, Canadian Alex Ledin, who prepares both their Mercury 2.5 liter 400 horsepower engines. And these two have been head and shoulders above the competition here so far. Bad news for Marit Stromoy, who was unable to start the race, her boat being pulled out of the water there. Up in the lead, Celio starts working past the back markers in the race, and this should pose a new challenge for those lead drivers on this tight circuit, perhaps presenting new opportunities for the likes of Eric Stark, who's been very solid so far in his bid to push into the top three. Cantando, a 12-time Grand Prix winner, has his sights on Yusuf Al Rubayan in sixth position as the Italian puts the pedal to the metal again on the outside of the circuit. Cantando does it! The Motoglass F1 team driver smokes Al Rubayan to move into sixth spot. Al Rubayan's woes continue as Torrente also overhauls the Kuwaiti, bumping the round two winner down to eighth position. But there's drama unfolding in the lead as Shep makes a move on Sammy Celio. The Finnish driver taking the turns tight through the crowded inner circuit while the Frenchman goes wide on the outside, enjoying clearer waters and faster speeds. Celio fends Shiap off there thanks to Marsala getting in the way of Shiap, but Shiap keeps at it as Celio is bogged down by backmarker number 73, Cedric de Guin. That's all Shiap needs to zoom past the fin. Celio finds himself contemptuously bumped down to second as Shiap hits incredible speeds, immediately opening a two second lead over the Finnish double world champ as a CTIC China team cheers him on. Further back, Duarte Benevente holds on to his starting position in 10th behind Anderson as the Portuguese driver tries to push up through the field in his new more boats. With 15 laps over, Shiap is more than 8 seconds up on Celio. Torrente is 6th, followed by Al Rubayan and Al Kemzi in 8th in his first race of the year for Team Abu Dhabi. Al Hamili is back in 12th. A big battle unfolds ahead of Torrente as Cantando tries to hunt down Eric Stark in fourth position. Like Schiap, the Italian has been preferring to cruise wide on the outside of the course to great effect as he moves up on the young Swede and the two enter a drag race down that long back straight. Cantando catches Stark just before the two short turns. Cantando has it. Stark backs off. The Italian veteran takes fourth position in his own family built blaze boat. It's a repeat. Oh. 
heat of their battle in Evian, which saw the two crash out after colliding with each other. Cantando sets his sights on chasing Corella, but Corella is 11 seconds ahead of him. Back in 13th position is Ahmed Al Hamali, Stark's Emirates teammate, who's trying to push for a top 10 finish. In second, Celio trying to fend off a feisty Corella. The two are very close, and Celio goes over. That is a spectacular crash. Yellow flag. What a shame for Celio. His new Baba is known to get a lot of air and lift in the tunnel, making it fast, but also making it tough to keep the boat down. There it is on the replay. The two are virtually touching, and Celio flips over. Here it is from another angle. Corella veers in, and there appears to be contact between the two, and away Celio's boat goes. And here it is again from the drone. Corella appears to move into Celio's path. Meanwhile, Duarte Benevente and Jesper Fors are out of the race. That leaves just seven laps remaining in the race, with Celio out, and Schiap's 15-second lead suddenly cut down due to the yellow flag bunch-up. Corella, Cantando, and Stark all have a shot at nabbing the lead at the restart. The crowd is silent with anticipation. There they go, the race is back on. Corella moves up on Schiap, but the Frenchman maintains his speed and fends the Italian off. On the inside, Cantando has moved up to go head and head with Corella. Cantando dealing with that Schiap spray as he briefly moves into second. Schiap's exceptional speed and balance on the water once again opens the lead for him. Meanwhile, Stark gets the jump on Cantando. Cantando bumped down after overdriving that turn. He keeps up his pursuit of Stark, but he can't pass the Swede. And his woes continue as Corella also passes Cantando on the inside. Cantando suddenly finding himself down in fourth. So Stark makes the most of that yellow flag to move up to second position behind Schiap with Corella third, Contando fourth, and Torrente in fifth. With very little left in the race, Corella makes a last gasp effort to catch Stark as the two come around into the final lap. Corella pushing his boat to the limit, almost losing control. But Stark is not budging. The multiple F2 champion continues his great start to the F1 H2O series on track for another podium. The seconds tick away as Schiap approaches the happy ending that eluded him in France. The crowd cheer on as he wins the fourth Grand Prix title of his career. Well-earned celebration for CTIC China team. Eric Stark, runner-up, Alex Carella, third. Race results, Cantando finishing a great race in fourth, Torrente in fifth, a respectable sixth for Alkemzi, Philip Roms in seventh, Al Rubayan eighth, Christophe Larigo ninth, and Al Hamali gets a point in tenth. Bin Hendy forced to retire in his first F1 race. It's really, uh, really awesome, you know, it was a really tough race. It, it, was, um, it was so tough out there and uh, I lost Catando in uh, when I uh, tried to uh, to lap uh, Philip Rome, but uh, then I had a really good start in the in the restart after the yellow, so I, I passed uh, both Catando and Carella. So and then you know it was like four or five laps left, so I just tried to keep the boat on the right side. Yeah, I was. Uh some technical issues uh, and I slowing down the speed and Karela passing me but I don't know why he closed me badly. He just come and hit my boat. I had straight line in the boy. He was already passing me coming outside and aiming for the boy but he tried to close me maybe too much and hit my boat and I took off. It's uh, I don't understand that kind of driving. It's not so nice. Yeah, I was pushing hard, we was pushing hard, uh, I mean, uh, I think he's, uh, he didn't touch me, I didn't even feel uh, that he touched me, I think uh, we are racing, we are racing hard, everybody wants to win, I mean, it's normal that... Uh, 
I think crash happens when you are at the limit, I mean, but that's the race. In the overall standings, Torrente manages to hold on to his lead by just one point, as Schiap's win catapults him to second in the standings, with Aurubayan still third ahead of Anderson, Stark seven, Celio 11. I'm very happy after Avion, my team uh, uh, is very disappointed and we work a uh, lot up for the, uh, the race and uh, we do win the race, I win the race and it's an incredible day. But uh, uh, now we have one objective, it's the championship and uh, winning China, sure. That brings to a close a spectacular Grand Prix of Portugal as the UIM F1 H20 flag is passed on to Liuzhou, China which will host round four of the 2015 World Championship. See you there. Wow, 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 wow.